I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Greetings in the name of the Lord. So glad you can join us today. We have for you an Ernest Angley Ministries classic, a sermon by Reverend Angley going back into the 1980s. And this message today means as much as it did back then. The title is, Why Should We Remember Lot's Wife? You know, Jesus made that statement to remember Lot's wife, and it pertains to the final hour in which we live. I know this message will bless you in a great way. Now listen. You may be turning your Bibles to the 17th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. The 32nd verse, which is a very short verse. These are the words of Jesus when he was here on earth. Remember Lot's wife. The subject for tonight is why should we remember Lot's wife? Why should we remember her? We're not related to her, only that she was a member of the human race. Her name is recorded in the Bible, but not in a good way. Why should we remember her? Why did Jesus remember her? Years had passed by. Why did Jesus remember Lot's wife? Why? Why? Well, I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why in this service. And we need to know why, because we are living in a crucial hour. We're living in the period of time on planet Earth that we must know why. And we certainly need to take heed. And we better take heed. And we better remember Lot's wife. Jesus reminded the people when he was here that the hour of his coming would be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. The place where Lot's wife lived. The place where she lost her victory in God, her faith in God, turned her back on Jehovah God and went the way of the world. Mixed and mingled with the heathens and lost her soul and lost her life. How sad. She was warned of, the, of coming judgment. You on planet Earth today, you are warned of coming judgment. It is time for you to look into God's Word and hear the Word of the Lord. Lot's wife heard the Word of the Lord. Two angels went in to bring her out and her family with her. Two angels. Today you have the Word. You have the Holy Spirit to bring you out. You really have the two angels and then a multitude of angels working to help you get out also, besides the Word and the Holy Spirit Himself. They had the message of doom. God had given it to Abraham. Lot knew that judgment was about to fall, and he believed it. Some people cannot believe that judgment's about to fall. Oh, they're scared to death of nuclear warfare. They're afraid of being destroyed that way. Let me tell you something, I don't care how many peace marches you have, you're not going to stop the battle of Armageddon, it's on its way. What you better be doing is to get ready to get out of here. You don't need to think that you're going to dig you a hole and hide. There will be no hiding place down here. And the Bible tells it all. Sure, the people are going to be destroyed, as I said the other week, as I preached the other week, that there's just going to be a few men left on planet Earth. 
They're telling about all the millions of people that would be destroyed here in America. Maybe 90 million people left. People scared and afraid. Why? Because they don't have God. And they're thinking they can march, that they can make a treaty with Russia and have peace. That isn't what the Bible tells us. To have peace in your soul, you have to have Jesus. And to have peace in this world, the Prince of Peace will have to come. And to have lasting peace, he'll set up his kingdom for 1,000 years right here on planet Earth. But many people turn up their noses at that statement, laughing up their sleeve. They think, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is God talk that I'm using, and I know God knows what he's talking about. And God has said these things, and they're going to happen. Lot's wife didn't believe it either. Why? Because there was a time she probably would have believed anything that God had to say. Behind her was judgment in Noah's day, and she had heard about it again and again. And she knew what God did, that he destroyed all but eight souls. Some people will say, well, I don't believe that there, well, God would allow a war to destroy the population of planet Earth in such a way that there won't be but a few men left. God said so in his book. And in Noah's day, there wasn't but eight souls left. Many people will not believe the word of God today, but I'll tell you, it's in the air, it's everywhere. And so they're talking about it everywhere you go now that we got to do something to stop war that we're going to be destroyed. The destiny of man is written in the word of the living God. Why are people so uncertain about the future? Why are people so scared? Like Lot's wife, they don't believe what God has said. And if you don't believe God, you don't have the light for this hour. And you're walking in darkness. And you look out there and there's no future. You look out there and you say, we're all going to be destroyed. Well, we know in whom we have believed. And we know that he will keep that which we have committed into his hands. And we know that God is with us. And we know that God is for us and we're for him. And we know that we've been set free through the truth and we know we are sheltered by the truth, protected by the truth. So I'm not worried about the future. God holds the future in his hand, and so long as God holds it in his hand, it's in good hands. And why should I be afraid? Why should I worry? The Lord has told us about this end time hour. Men's hearts failing them looking at the things that's coming upon the earth. There's never been such a time as now. People are running scared. They ought to be scared. I'm glad they're scared. If you don't have God tonight, you ought to be scared. You that have joined us by television, if you don't have God in your life, you ought to be scared. It's dangerous to be without God. Lot's wife should have been afraid. But she was afraid of the wrong things and wasn't afraid of the right things, and so it is with people today. They're so afraid that they're going to be bombed. And yet their little tiny minds tell them, oh, we got to march for peace. We got to outlaw war. Do you really think that you can get the enemies of America to sign a peace treaty and they'll stick with it? Russia's been making war weapons as fast as she can make them. If you think she's going to stop because you have a little treaty with her, you're badly mistaken. It's all written in the Word of God, the destiny of the nations, the war of the nations, and they're getting ready for it now. 
and many people can't see it. Why? Because they won't accept the Word of God. Lot's wife couldn't see it. She couldn't see that she was in great danger. She wanted to stay. If the angel of the Lord hadn't dragged her out, she would have stayed. And yet after the Lord carefully had his angel to drag her out of the city and told her not to look back, not to lose sight of God, not to look back on the destruction that God was bringing about. She disobeyed God. So many people, they laugh today in the face of God. They laugh when you tell them that these things are going to happen. But now they're believing that it's going to happen, but they don't believe God has anything to do with it. And they think they can shut it off. And they think they can stop war. They think they can stop the battle of Armageddon. They think that man holds his destiny in his hands, not the destiny of the nations you don't hold in your hands. You hold your own life in your hands. And Jesus died for you. And he paid a great price that you could have his word. And this is the book of instruction. And it's all written here. And it will tell you what's going to happen. And we're on time. The nations are on time. The Lord spoke years ago through his prophets. He even told where different nations would be at this time. And believe you me, they're there. He told which side they would be on. He let you know the nations that would be lined up against him. It's all recorded in the Word of God. Why don't you study it? If you're worried about the future, if you want information about the future, there's no need to ask man, go to God's book and find out what God has said. God has spoken it and it'll come to pass because it's thus saith the Lord. And man can't change it. But man is setting himself up like, like Belshazzar of old. The accusation against him was the God in whose hand thy breath is, hast thou not glorified? That was the accusation that Daniel gave to him from God as he interpreted the handwriting on the wall, translated it for him. The handwriting, the finger of God is writing now. What is it saying? Doomsday is just ahead. The nations are getting ready for the final war. Why the scientists are saying we can't stand another war. Well, Jesus told us there'd never been a war like it and said unless the days were shortened, there wouldn't be any flesh saved. Zechariah said there'd be a war weapon that men's flesh would melt from their bones and their eyes would melt in their sockets before the bones could even hit the ground. It's coming. Nuclear warfare, sure. And more. More. You're not going to escape it only through God. There isn't a tower strong enough. There isn't a pit deep enough to hide you. It'll take the rock of ages to hide you, and you better be saying, Oh, rock of ages, hide thou me. Rock of ages, be my shelter in time of storm. Rock of ages, O oh Jesus of Nazareth, be my help. I need you. But so many people do not feel the need of God tonight. They do not have the knowledge of God. They are running in all kinds of circles. And they think that man can do it for himself. They think that man can make treaties. Man's been making treaties for years and years and breaking treaties. Making and breaking, breaking and making, and now the final is about here. This is the hour for it. The same Bible, the same, even the same prophet that God used, Ezekiel, and told him about the Jews becoming a nation after being scattered among all nations that the Lord would gather them together. God told that same prophet 
that Israel would become a nation and then run right on telling him about the battle of Armageddon. That an angel would fly through the sky with an invitation to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field from Lord God Almighty. Come to the great feast of Lord God Almighty. Come and eat the flesh of bondmen, free men, of royalty. Come, captains and kings and so forth. Come. Yes. And the Bible tells us it'll take seven months to bear the dead and seven years to clean up the battlefield. And in the valley of Jehoshaphat, the blood's going to run up to the horse's bridle 200 miles. Doubt it, believe it, accept it, whatever. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. She didn't believe what God said. That's the reason the Lord said, remember her. She disobeyed. She went against everything that God stood for. She loved the pleasures of sin. This is a mad, mad, crazy, love, pleasure, loving world that we live in. Many people never go to church. They never take any time with God. No, Sunday's turned into a play day. Watching one sports event after another. They've forgotten God. They've left God out. America is headed for big trouble. Used to, the Americans were not afraid. We didn't think we'd ever be afraid. We wasn't afraid, America wasn't afraid when Kaiser came on the scene, when Hitler came on the scene. America had confidence because there were so many that knew God and had faith in God. But where is that faith tonight? America's running scared. But is Israel afraid? There she is, a very small nation. But if the enemy crosses her, she goes after the, the enemy. She doesn't sit around and talk, talk, talk. No. God has given her a heart of strength. Yes, Samson lost his power, but Samson's gotten his power back. And Samson's moving forward once more. God said it would happen. And in our day, 1948, Israel became a state and now a great small nation. Doesn't that tell you something? I remind you again, as I told you the other week, that the Lord said, the generation that would be on planet earth when the fig tree bloomed and in prophecy, the Jewish nation is the fig tree, would not depart until all is fulfilled and we are the rapture generation. Lot's wife better wake up. Lot's wife better become a believer. Lot's wife better flee the wrath of God. Lot's wife better open her ears to what God is saying. Jehovah God has said it and he means it. Doomsday is almost here. People are feeling it. Even without any God in their hearts and in their lives, they sense there's danger everywhere. It's in the very air you breathe. It's in all nations. That feeling, that disaster is on its way. But we as children of God, we know the end of this thing. We know our destiny. We know it's almost go home time. We know that it's almost midnight. We know that Jesus is coming. And we know that we're going to be changed in a moment in a twinkle of an eye, caught away to be with the Lord forever. Oh, but you say, preacher, people's been saying that for years. Yes, the Lord said there'd be scoffers in the last days saying, where is the sign of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, everything's just like it used to be, but it isn't like it used to be. Our society's not like it used to be. I don't care how many people will tell you that boys and girls as a whole are as good as they used to be. They're not. There's evil everywhere. 
There's some good boys and girls, but there's a lot of bad ones. And the Lord said in the last days, the spirit of disobedience would work in children. There's never been a time in the history of man there's so many devil-possessed children as today. Parents are saying, I can't do anything with mine. Therefore, ever run into somebody for help, some psychiatrist, some psychologist, somebody, help, 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 help me with my child. How old is your child? Maybe he's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Isn't that ridiculous? Used to mothers and daddies could control their children at that age. They control their children. You seldom ever saw anybody that didn't have control. But in this hour that we live in, such a spirit of disobedience, mothers and daddies have lost control. And boys and girls as a whole are taking over control, the controls. And so many of them they do as they please, and any time that a child can do as it pleases, becomes devil-possessed. We live in an hour of rape and murder. We live in an hour of distress. We live in an hour of danger. Our refuge is God and our hope is God. Our trust is God. And on our money it says, in God we trust. Some of us really do. We don't just carry it around on a piece of money saying, in God we trust. Our heart shouts it, in God we trust. Our hope, our trust is in Him. Remember Lot's wife. Get out of here. Get out of here. Judgment is coming. The Holy Spirit is saying to you, get ready, get ready to get out of here. Armageddon's on its way. Armageddon's coming. Get out of here. Get out of here. The whole earth's going to reel and rock like a drunkard, the Bible tells us. Hailstones are going to fall out of the skies about the weight of a hundred pounds, the Bible tells us. Oh, yes. Nuclear warfare. Wanting to know how they're going to survive and trying to plan a way to survive and some people storing away food. Yes, you'd be surprised the people in America that have food sellers right now. They're not letting people know where they have their food stored. There's... Numbers of people in America that are storing away foods, getting ready for nuclear war. They better be feeding their souls with this kind of food, the word of the living God, and get ready to leave here. They better remember Lot's wife. Forget about storing food away for their stomach. My Lord and my God. And trying to teach people how to survive if you want to know how to survive, this is the book of instructions on how to survive. You better walk with the Lord hand in hand with Him. And if you walk with God, you'll be all right. Just as the Lord looked after Noah and his family, just as God took Lot and his family out before destruction, he's going to take the bride of Christ out. Oh, hallelujah. The end time signs are all around us. The Bible gives us many, many signs of warning to alert us and let us know when the end time hour would be approaching. And any spirit-filled person that's walking with God today and with knowledge of the Holy Scriptures will tell you that all the end time signs are being fulfilled and the children of God are being alerted every hour of the day and night that Jesus is soon coming. The call of God is to every child of God for us to tell the world about Jesus, for us to preach Jesus to all nations, to get people ready to get out, to get out, to get out. It's time for us to look up the Lord didn't tell us to make shelters. He said, when you see all these things coming to pass, He didn't say, you better get you some food stored up. He said, look up, redemption draweth nigh. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. Look up. 
redemption draweth nigh. And so that word redemption is a blessed word. That word redemption is a love word to the children of God. That word redemption is everything that we could ever hope for or long for. So redemption draweth nigh our way of escape. Just like the ark was the way of escape for those in the days of Noah and those that turned up their noses at the ark, they entered into the disaster zone. So it is with people today. They are not looking at the ark and they're making fun of the ark just as they made fun of the ark in Noah's day. They're making fun of Jesus Christ, the ark, the eternal ark of our safety now. But thank God there's some people got sense enough to know that Jesus Christ is the way, that he is life, that he is the one. And without him, we are nothing. And it's time for people to wake up. They say, oh, wake up. Wake up, we're going to be destroyed. There's no need to wake up and do what people are planning to do to store food away, to build bomb shelters, uh, to uh, think they're going to protect themselves and hide away. It's time to wake up and clothe ourselves and put on the whole armor of God. Read in Paul's writing to the Ephesians, uh, and he said, put on the whole armor of God, and when you put it on, uh, when you've done all to stand, then you stand. You don't run, you stand. You stand for the truth. And it's time for us to stand for the truth, to know the truth, to know who we are and what we are in the Lord and know what's coming upon the earth and not be influenced by the spirit that's on planet earth, that spirit of fear and frustration uh, and that spirit of trying to find the way out. Jesus said, I am the way. So we have the way. We have the way out. Let not your heart be troubled, he said. Neither let it be afraid. In my Father's house is a mansion for you. And I will come for you. He will come. He promised he would come. And he will come. Remember Lot's wife. Are you going to be like her? In no matter what your family might do, are you going to be like her? No matter if your family goes on with God without you, are you going to look back loving the sins of this whole world and longing to stay with it, hugging it to your heart, your bosom? Or are you going to keep your eyes on him who died on Calvary for you. Poor wretched sinner, poor backslider. Certainly you're scared and you're rightly so. Remember Lot's wife, alcoholic, drug addict. There's hope for you. Jesus loves you. He sent me with a love message for you. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to deliver you. If you're an alcoholic, drug addict, lost and undone without God with any kind of sins in your heart, you can be free. And you that are lost and undone without God while the alcoholics are being delivered from alcohol and receiving God and the drug addicts being delivered from drugs and receiving God, you too can be set free. Alcoholic, put your hand against mine. Drug addict, put your hand against mine. All of you that are lost out there, that are watching me by television, put your hand against mine as a point of contact while I pray for you. Lord, I bring the alcoholics, the drug addicts, the devil possessed to you. Jesus, you said in your name, believers would cast out devils. In the name of Jesus, as a servant of the living God, I command the demons of alcohol, drugs. The devils possess the people that are longing to be set free. I bind those demons' spirits, and in Jesus' 
name I say, come out. Come out of that person to enter that person no more. In Jesus' holy name, I command it. And now lift up that hand, sinner friend, and say, Oh God, save my soul. I'm lost. Please, God, I don't want to die and go to hell. Thanks for delivering me from demon possession. Thanks for delivering me from alcohol, from drugs. I know that there is power in the blood of Jesus. And I believe the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. All of my sins say, come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. If you mean it, he has come. He is yours. And you belong to him. You who are sick and afflicted, Jesus said believers would lay hands on the sick and they would be cured. This is a form of laying on of hands. God is the one. That's the reason that this works. God is everywhere. He's there where you are. He's here. And I'm going to agree with you for you to be set free. Put your hand against mine on the television screen as a point of contact. Or if you have an afflicted child, put its little body against my hand on the television screen. Thousands have been healed this very way. Because God is the healer. And the Lord gave this method. Lord, I bring the sick and afflicted, the cancer victims, the heart patients, the diabetics, those that are afflicted with other diseases, little retarded children and crippled ones. Heal! Heal! Heal in the name of the Lord. And his healing power is flowing. His healing presence is going into your body. That healing presence, only believe and it will get you well. Only believe and give God the glory. Ernest Angley is not a healer. Ernest Angley is a servant of the living God and believes in the power of prayer. And God is answering prayer for so many. And I believe that he's answering prayer for you. Call a friend after the telecast or a neighbor and say, the Lord save me today, or the Lord heal me today, then write, tell me about it, and I will rejoice with you. Friend, I trust you were blessed by the message today. Now I want to take this opportunity to invite you to help us to continue to share the message of truth with people here and abroad. That's the mission of this ministry. That's the way it started in 1954 when Reverend Angley and Angel came to Akron, Ohio. Win the lost at any cost. And we continue seeking to win more lost souls until Jesus returned. You can donate through our website. Just go to ernestangely.org and there donate safely and secure online. Or you can always donate by mail. And if you decide to become a monthly sponsor of this Jesus ministry, you'll get a new mailing each month. And the November mailing is entitled, Come and Dine. Yes, this is Thanksgiving month. So many of us, we seek to celebrate by having a great feast, but this letter pertains to spiritual feasting in the Lord, becoming fatter and stronger in Him. And friend, each month that you sponsor this Jesus ministry, not only will you get a new mailing, but you'll get a giant little book each month. These are giant spiritual messages in a booklet form.
And the November Giant Little Book is entitled The Benefits of the Cross. Friend, there are so many benefits, spiritual, physical, and financial. So when you send in your support, be sure to request offer P393. And don't forget about the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. The latest edition is entitled, You Must Share Jesus. Also, you'll read many testimonies as well as that great sermon in this edition, how people are being blessed, healed, delivered through this Jesus ministry. And now we have something special for you, taking you in to Charlotte, North Carolina, as Reverend Angeli ministers to the people. You'll hear some testimonials going forth. This is from a crusade that took place in 1976. So watch, listen, and be blessed. Neighbor, it's testimony time on the telecast today. And the testimonies you're about to hear have not been rehearsed. Just a few moments ago, out of this great congregation at the Ovens Auditorium in Charlotte, North Carolina, I asked how many had been healed through the Ernest Angley ministry. There was a multitude of people stood to their feet, and so I had a few of them to come to give witness, to tell you what God has done for them. I am not a healer. I do not think I'm a healer. I know I'm not a healer. Jesus is the healer. I am just a witness, and all the honor and all the glory goes to him because it is his work, not mine. Give us your name and the town that you are from. My name is Earl R. Cole. I'm from Wageburg, North Carolina. What happened to you through this ministry? Uh, um, my blood was thick. I was taking six or eight aspirins a day to keep them from clogging. And uh, you, uh, through your minister, I got through with smoking. You were delivered from smoking, yes. from the nicotine habit. Yes, sir, that was the first thing you asked me. First thing I asked you, if you smoke. <laughs> if I smoke. And you, you got delivered. I got delivered Don't from... Don't you feel better? Oh, yes, sir. Put I'm on 20 glad. pounds. <laughs> and you gained how much? 20 pounds. Well, you still look good. I, uh, not only that, but my back was healed. I still got arthritis, but my, I was having trouble with my lower part of my back. And, and the m most important thing, I met Jesus through your minister. That's right. That is the most important thing. Praise God. I've been saved, done joined the church, and I've been baptized with water, and I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's a good testimony. God bless you. Give us your name and the town that you are from. Charlie Hedrick from Salisbury, North Carolina. What happened to you through this ministry? I had a thyroid trouble, and I was taking four grams of thyroid medicine every morning. And the doctor told me if I didn't take it, I would get weak and go into a coma and possibly die. Go into a coma. Into a coma and possibly die. And my legs hurt me all the time. I didn't have no strength. Praise the Lord. Last time he was here, I had a white card and you prayed for that, prayed for my thyroid medicine. I, if I could have got started running, I believe I would never quit running. You I just had, felt that good? Yes, sir. You touched me and I hit the floor and I got up and I just felt that good. You mean I, you fell in the spirit? Yes, sir. I didn't push I you didn't down. I didn't go out, but I hit the floor. You, you know, fell. You didn't push me. Didn't, didn't push you. Down you went. Yes, sir. And I hadn't had no, pain, no pain or nothing since then. I hadn't took no medicine, nothing. And I've told people about it, and not everybody, but some everybody of them didn't could. believe it. Some <laughs> of them told me I should keep on taking medicine until I went back to the doctor. I supposed to go back to the doctor in May, and I just can't wait to get back there and see what he's going to say, because I know uh, I'm here. You know it. That's great. <laughs> Give us your name and the town that you're from. Otis Blaine from Duncan, South Carolina. What happened to you through this ministry? I got healed of emphysema and a spot on my lung. The 29th of February, and I went back to the doctor the fourth day of March and had x-rays made, and he said it was perfectly clear. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't this wonderful? The Lord did it. His works are great in our midst today. Thank God. 
you were in a terrible shape then. Yes, sir. And eventually you would have lost your life, no doubt. I've been this way for about four years. And the Lord set you free. Yes, sir. And the x-rays prove it. They prove it. I'm glad for you. That's a great testimony. <laughs> Give us your name and the town that you're from. Cloud Christie from Kannapolis, North Carolina. What happened to you, sir? Uh, your life service. Uh, you called me out of the audience with heart trouble. I got uh, my heart healed, new heart, and I got blood pressure and gallbladder. Got a gallbladder healing, blood pressure healing, and what condition was your heart in? Well, the doctor just told me I had a bad heart. The he doctor said, said told in, you had a bad heart? enlarged, and I was taking three blood pressure pills a day, and I had a heart attack about two years ago. But uh, after your service, uh, the last time, I went to work on Monday, and I worked, and come back Tuesday morning, got sick, and had to go back home. And uh, my wife had to carry me to the hospital. So I just got out last Saturday. I had a blockage of uh, kidneys. Got one thing healed, and the enemy <laughs> jumped on you with something else. And the devil hit me with something else. But I'm glad your heart got healed. And I had x-rays made. And uh, this, uh, my doctor turned me over to another doctor, and he went on vacation. And uh, he gave him all my records. Well, this doctor, they made another cartogram. He says, uh, well, we asked him about it. He said, how this cartogram turn? He said, well, it shows you ain't got heart trouble. He says, uh, well, I'm going to operate on you Monday morning. He says, I've got to know. He said, what's your doctor's got you for? He says, I don't see. So he took me down to the x-ray room that Sunday and gave me a heart x-ray, three. And my wife asked him about them. She said, he said, there wasn't nothing wrong with my heart. Well, maybe that's the only way the Lord could get you <laughs> back there for those x-rays to be made yeah. because if you're like a lot of folk, you sure dread to go and have any made. Well, uh, And so by you, something else happening to you did go back and you had your x-rays to prove yeah. that God had healed your heart. And uh, I hadn't took a blood pressure pill since. My blood pressure's down 140, over 80, and it's always run about... 190 to 200 on top and 104 on the bottom. Well, that's what God did. The Lord's mighty good, isn't he? Yeah. I sanctify the Lord God this night. I declare that the miracles and the healings are his, that I have nothing to do with them, that this is the power of God, that I have no secret powers of my own. It is just the power of of God through his son, Jesus. The revelations are through the Holy Spirit and all the honor and all the glory goes to the Lord. He is here. Yield to him and get your miracle. Here's a little boy that is deaf in his left ear and 40% in the right. 40 to 60. 40 to 60. Okay. All right. In the name of Jesus, create the eardrum, O oh Lord. Create the eardrum. Oh, deaf spirit, in the name of Jesus, come out! <laughs> oh, that brought a smile. Who could ever doubt that? Now, let's get the other one. Real good. Thou deaf spirit, in the name of Jesus, come out! <laughs> well, he has it, Mom and Daddy. Yes, he does. There it is. And I command the deaf spirits to never, never come back. You're a good-looking boy. And he's happy as mom and dad. He is really thrilled. He wants to get to mother. Something has happened to him. Something happened, didn't it? He wants to dry her tears with his sleeve. He don't want her to cry. So he is... 
He's taking his sleeve for the handkerchief and drying her tears with Amen. each one of his little sleeves. Isn't that cute? He didn't have a handkerchief to do it with. You know how to dry tears, don't you? <laughs> you know, the Lord sure is good. Give God a great big hand. God bless you, Mother and Daddy. Glad she got a mineral car. The lady's from the Church of God. She struggled with depression. She wants to join peace of the Lord again. Are you saved? Yes. In the name of Jesus, I command the mental spirits to have no more power over her. We don't have to be troubled to death. There's joy in the Lord. The lady's Baptist. She has cataracts, arthritis, and a snuff habit. Take off the glasses. You have cataracts on both eyes? Here goes. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, thou foul spirits called cataract. Ow! Ow! Open your eyes and look at the man of God and see good. You see good? Yes. You're seeing me real good. Real. And I come in and never crave snuff again. <laughs> Healing from heaven. The mother brings her daughter who has deafness off and on in the right ear. The doctors do not know what the cause of that is. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the mighty prophet of God, I command the ear to open and never close again. Out! Amen. Amen. It happened. The mother, oh. the mother has pains in the lower stomach and is troubled with Mama's going to have a baby. Is that right? Are you glad she's going to have a baby? She's reporting that Mama's going to have a baby. Sharing it with the preacher. You know, people you love, you like to share things with. And you watch me on television. You do. And tell everybody what you told me. What did you say? My mom's going to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and what does mother want? I want to be saved. And, uh, Good. Receive the Holy Ghost. Say, oh God. Oh God. Save my soul. my soul. Take away this heavy load. I will serve you. Serve rest you. of my life. Say, come on in, Jesus. On. Ooh, and he came in, and now that baby will be born with a Christian mommy. Amen. The gentleman's Baptist has arthritis, uh, trouble with muscular dystrophy, has hemorrhoids, and high blood pressure. Are you saved? Yes, sir. Yay! In the name of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Something has happened to this man. He will have a great testimony. The gentleman's from a holiness church and has arthritis. You were what? You were healed? In my last crusade, this man was healed of cancer. Isn't that wonderful? You have arthritis. Are you serving God? Yes, I am. Good. Oh, I saw that. The lady's Methodist. She has arthritis. She wants a closer walk with the Lord and wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Where is your arthritis? Thou foul spirits called arthritis, come out of her. I have it in the vision. The arthritis is fleeing. Move your hands and see that the man of God's telling you the truth. <laughs> yes, it's, gone. it's gone. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. The lady's Baptist. She has nerve deafness with dizziness, heart palpitations, and a sinus condition. In the name of Jesus, recreate. There is no medical cure for nerve deafness, but God has the cure. He is furnishing that cure tonight. Oh, deaf spirits, in the name of Jesus, come out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, come out. Amen. Amen. I have a miracle. I have a miracle. I can hear. I can hear. I can hear good. I can hear good. <laughs> it's wonderful. That which man in all his loving care could not do, God did it for you. Isn't God wonderful? It makes me feel so good. <laughs> yes, the Lord is good. The lady's from the Friends Church. She has arthritis, she's diabetic, and she's going blind. In the name of Jesus, I command no more sugar in the bloodstream. In the name of the Lord, recreate the eyes. Recreate thou blind spirits out. Open your eyes and look at the man of God. 
it happened, didn't it? Thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Sure is. Suddenly it happened, didn't it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fantastic? It sure is. It's unbelievable to get a miracle like this lady just now received. But yet it happens again and again. Seems almost like a dream, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But it's true. Yes, it is. Be healed all over and go and serve the Lord with gladness. This gentleman's also from the First Church of the Living God. He's diabetic, hard of hearing, has a heart condition, a constipation in the stomach, uh, head trouble, and high blood pressure. Anything else you could think of? No, that's, that's all wrong. Right. You're sure that you, you get my letter from 42 years in one church. Is that right? And that's the letter. Exactly. You're a minister. That's right. I remember. I remember your letter. Yeah, I do. I'm hard of hearing. You're hard of hearing. This is definitely. 42 years he's preached the gospel. 42 years in one church he wrote and told me, recreate the eardrum. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I knew you would do it. Oh, death spirit, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, come out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have a miracle. I have a miracle. I can hear. I can hear. In the name of Jesus, come out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Yes, he wrote and told me that his hearing was completely gone in one ear, and a lot of it had gone from the other, and it was hindering him in his work for God. Now you won't have no excuse. You just have that's, to keep on right. preaching. That's right. Oh, friend, it's great looking back in time, seeing what God has done for others in the past. I hope it blessed you. But remember this, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he's done for others in the past, he'll do for you today. Only believe, Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believe. And friend, watching today, if you've been blessed through this Jesus ministry, maybe you received a miracle or a healing. We'd love to hear about it. You can send us your testimony by email. Send it to testimonies at ernestangely.org. Or if you just want to pass along a message, how much the program blesses you, we appreciate that as well. And I'd also like to take this opportunity when you have a chance, come visit us at Grace Cathedral. We always welcome visitors to worship the Lord with us. We have services every weekend, Friday night, 7 p.m., Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Sunday evening, 7 p.m. The Word of God goes forth in music and singing, preaching and teaching. And oh, we'll have testimony time at different times in the services. It's just a great time of the Lord. You will be blessed. However, if you're unable to be with us in person, join us by way of the live stream. You can go to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries or our Facebook page. Either way, you can watch us in service, be a part of the service on the live stream. And if you happen to join us by way of our YouTube channel, well, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you're notified each time we have service. And I want to encourage you, check out all of our social media content. We're adding new content all of the time, especially on our Instagram. It's just good spiritual food for your soul. And when you, don't forget now, in a couple weeks, it's Thanksgiving. And November 24th, that Friday night, will be our Thanksgiving Holy Communion. Make plans to be with us. Such a special service, a special time of the year. We give thanks unto the Lord. We take Holy Communion, and God really moves, and He really blesses people. Well, I hope you are blessed by this classic today. We look forward to seeing you next week. Remember, you are special to God. In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise In the morning when I rise Give me Jesus Give me Jesus 
Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have this world, but give me Jesus, when I Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have this world, but give me Jesus. When I kneel and pray When I kneel and pray When I kneel and pray Give me Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus. Every Friday on the Ernest Angley Ministries Facebook page, we invite the nations of the world to send in their prayer requests, and we cover them with prayer during our Friday night miracle service. People are responding by the thousands with great testimonies of blessing and deliverance. Need a job? Post a message. Have a sick child? Post a message. In despair? Post a message. Seeking the divine will of God? Battling drugs and alcohol? Remember, Jesus said all things are possible to him that believe it. Claim your miracle by joining us in prayer and then send us your praise report with a comment. It is that simple if you believe.